Hey y'all, what's up? So today I'm doing a little tutorial on how I painted this jacket. Giving you some tips and tricks on leather painting and painting in general, blending and all that jazz. So this is a vintage 60s or early 70s iron butterfly concert poster that I'm painting onto the back of this vintage 70s jacket. I started off blocking off my shapes with some white paint being kind of careful because I did not start with a sketch. I started freehanding with paint because I felt confident that I could do it. Um, so we're building up the areas that are going to be covered with a white base. This is going to help our colors pop later when we paint over them and it's just going to help get the shapes done correctly from the beginning. For paint, I'm using Angelus Direct's acrylic leather paint, which I always use when painting onto leather. After I have my outline done, I'm going in with some lighter colors to start off with and then blending out from the edges to create kind of a 3D effect. I'm doing kind of a crackly sort of glass look over the bottom of butterfly wings and I just went with highlights to start off with and then working my way up to the shadows with a thin sort of detailed brush. The black outline is really going to make these pop and look kind of 3D. Um, right now I'm just worried about colors mainly. Once they're correct then I'll go in and blend and add highlights and shadows. Here's my photo reference, just so you have an idea of what I'm painting. I tend to work in sections. I'll do the highlights of the section or blocking off the section and then do the colors across that section. That way I'm not wasting the paint on my brush. For that smoky kind of opaque look, I'm just blending one color over the natural color of the coat to give it a smoky opaque effect. This paint is quite thin and nice for blending, so you can lay down your medium tones and even go back later after it's dried to add some secondary colors for blending. And remember to do a white base before adding a light color like yellow. Before adding a really dark color like black, I recommend having your painting flushed out and you're confident where you're going to be placing the black since it's very difficult to cover up with a thin paint like this. Lettering is always my favorite part, especially this funky vintage lettering. I'm adding the white first and then the color, and then I'll add highlights and shadows on top of the color to give it a 3D look. And again, lastly, adding the black after I've finished everything else. So I'll do the background and then I'm adding the black lining after everything. And I'm going to be repeating the process for the iron part above the butterfly. So I'm really making this a lighter color by adding a couple layers of white beforehand, then going in with the background color, and then the medium color of the iron. Now I'm just finishing up with some final touches of black here and there where I want to outline, and this is how it turned out. I'm very happy with the results of this painting. I think it looks a little bit more um, vibrant than the poster and I made a couple changes here and there where I wanted them. Let me know what y'all think. This jacket did sell so I'm sorry if anybody was interested in it. It did already sell but I can always do another one for you if you wanted a custom commission. Thank you so much and remember to follow me on Instagram at Misty Mountain Vintage to see first looks at new jackets and paintings that will be added to the shop. Thank you so much.